it's a remarkable piece of footage. If it's a hoax, it's very well done. If it's, um, if it's not, then I would say it's probably revolutionary. It's a fake, in my opinion. If you continue to ask questions that are out of bounds, I won't hesitate to terminate this interview. This is powerful because this is not a staged event. This is real. Interest in UFOs and Area 51 is at an all-time high. Last year, a highly rated TV special and best-selling home video purported to show an actual autopsy of an alien being from the famous Roswell, New Mexico crash of 1947. Many people and even some experts believe that autopsy footage was genuine. If that was indeed the body of an alien being from another world, could the footage in this program be the world's first hard visual evidence of an actual living and breathing alien being? An alien being communicating in an interview with the highly covert arm of the U.S. government? If the footage we're about to show you is genuine, then this could very well be the most important video in the history of mankind, proving once and for all that we are not alone. Within Nevada's Nellis Air Force Range, protected by the tightest security in the world, is the Groom Lake Test Site, a.k.a. Dreamland, a.k.a. Area 51, an installation so secret the government cryptically acknowledges its existence only as an operating location. Until recently, the military flat out denied the presence of such a base. It has served as the testing ground for many secret research and development projects, such as the U-2 and SR-71 Blackbird spy planes, the F-117A stealth fighter, and now the SR-75 penetrator, the super secret replacement for the SR-71. Every morning, a select group of specialists with high security clearances, some reportedly as high as 38 levels above top secret, arrive at McCarran Airport in Las Vegas to be flown to Area 51 aboard a Boeing 737. From the time they leave the ground until they return to Las Vegas at the end of each working day, they enter a world no outsider can ever truly know, except through rumor and the occasional shocking revelation. In 1989, a physicist named Robert Lazar went public with the stunning claim that the United States government was test flying disc-shaped aircraft of extraterrestrial origin at Area 51. Interviewed in silhouette by a Las Vegas TV reporter, Lazar, calling himself Dennis, claimed to be employed at a site on the outskirts of Area 51 known as S-4, where he was part of a team attempting to back-engineer the saucers to discover the secret of their advanced propulsion system. It was uh, a very sleek, thin-looking, uh, flying saucer-shaped craft. There were nine total. Uh, I only got to essentially work, back engineer, or analyze one of the craft. It's very plain. It's all one solid color, uh, a, a grayish pewter color, the same color as the outside of the craft. Yeah, there are no sharp corners anywhere. Every device in the craft, the seat, uh, the amplifier housings, everything has a rounded corner on it, almost as if it was all fashioned out of wax and then slightly melted so everything curved, even where the ceiling meets the floor on the end. Everything has a, a curve to it. Um, very, very plain, very wide open, uh, very impractical use of space. And there are three levels. The lower level um, houses the amplifiers themselves that swing, the three of them. The center level is where you enter the craft, where the seats and the amplifiers are. And the uh, top level is a small area, and I did not have access to that, so I don't know what's up there. Absolutely alien craft. There's no question about it. Well, first of all, the scope of the project was to back engineer it if they were United States craft we wouldn't be going backward trying to find out how they were built if we had built them. Uh, second of all, the size of uh, the equipment inside, 
the size of the seats, the uh, materials that were in use, completely alien to us, pardon the pun, and uh, you know the fuel, element 115, essentially non-existent. Uh, all these factors together, uh, and of course the briefing information stating that they were alien craft. Along with Robert Lazar, rocket scientist David Adair is one of the few individuals who will go on record concerning his personal experiences with alien technology at Area 51. It was not of our origin. They shouldn't have let me see that. And then in the results of it, um, they um, locked me in a room. And the reason they locked me up in a room was because um, I wouldn't tell them any more about how the engine would function. and they started getting a little bit more perturbed about that. A former consultant to NASA and top aerospace companies, Adair claims that in 1971, he was brought in to study the engine of a downed flying saucer. What I was looking at was a technological marvel of its time, and uh, it was a magnificent thing to see the setting there. And the whole situation just started really getting me more angry than anything because the fact that they could sit on such a hunk of technology and not tell us about it. Here we are using liquid fuel engines and rockets at NASA and here they've got an engine that's probably uh, in theory that we know of could be uh, a speed of light, an engine capable of speed of light or even faster. Ufologist and lecturer Sean David Morton has appeared on Sightings, Strange Universe and Hard Copy. He offers his own perspective on Lazar's stunning claim and the super-secret Area 51. Area 51 is approximately 135 miles north of Las Vegas. It sits in a, in a box that's at the western middle corner of the Nellis test site. It was originally called the Groom Lake Facility, and Area 51 actually gets its name from a bombing classification. There's Area 49, 50, 51, 52, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the things that Robert Lazar told us was that if we simply went out to a black mailbox at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday nights, that we would actually see flying saucers, that these objects would test, and that this was the military testing time between 6.30 and 9.30, and then early in the morning between about 3 a.m. and about 6 a.m. Vigorous efforts have been made by employees of the government and others to debunk Lazar's claims and discredit him personally. Nevertheless, Area 51 has become the center of a raging controversy. Whether in fact certain clandestine agencies of the U.S. government are in secret contact with alien beings. Project Sigma was supposedly a deal between the United States government and various extraterrestrials that after the Roswell crash of 1947, that an organization called Majestic 12 was formed and then in 1953, President Eisenhower was then brought in on this. Well, there was a negotiation going back and forth between the United States military, the government, and the extraterrestrials. Apparently, we had a number of things that the extraterrestrials wanted. Number one, the military needed hardware. We wanted technology, we wanted weapons technology, propulsion technology, metallurgy technology, and in exchange for this, the ETs were willing to trade us uh, their hardware for our software, and software namely being us. What they primarily wanted was genetic material, and in exchange for that, they were willing to give us certain, certain technological uh, advances, like a number of flying saucers. It is out of Area 51 that the tape we are about to show you was supposedly smuggled. On Friday, July 26, 1996, the offices of Rocket Pictures, a producer-distributor of motion pictures and television programs, received a phone call. A male voice, identifying himself only as Victor, claimed to be in possession of a videotaped interview with an extraterrestrial being. Tom Coleman, president of Rocket Pictures, was intrigued enough to take the call. I, of course, thought this was some hoax. In fact, I, I thought it might have been my brother at one point. Uh, but as, uh, as we spoke, uh, this was someone who seemed to be very serious. Uh, we um, went back and forth. 